Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Jack Curry, and across the last few weeks, I've had the opportunity to interview players like Don Mattingly, Mariano Rivera, Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, baseball players who throughout their careers have been called heroes. Well, today we're joined by another hero, Tony McKay. He's a frontline hero. And I want to tell you about Tony's story. It doesn't appear on the back of a baseball card, but it should. He has been a paramedic in Staten Island and Brooklyn for more than 30 years. He has transported patients to the hospital during the pandemic, and he learned that he had contracted the coronavirus. He spent three weeks in the hospital and was recently released. This is a story that I love to have the opportunity to tell. So, Tony, how amazing does it feel to be home? Uh, it feels uh, more amazing than I can ever express. Um, I was really, really sick. Um, the doctors at some point didn't think I would make it. They actually told my wife that they didn't think I would make it. And uh, one doctor in particular, Dr. Jay Nafoyam, um, they were going to put me on a ventilator, but he wanted to give it a little time on the CPAP machine to see if I would start to come around. And it was three rough days, but on the fourth day, I started to respond, and uh, they managed to keep me off the ventilator. And I spent uh, 15 full days on the CPAP machine before they were able to wean me off to regular oxygen. Tony, for you to be sitting here right now and to have to utter those words, that, that the doctor said to your wife, he might not make it, how blessed and how grateful are you that you have this opportunity to be home with your family and to know that you're one of the fortunate, fortunate ones who beat this virus? Um, I'm grateful beyond words. I'm grateful to every doctor, every nurse, every technician, and especially my coworkers who, to, under great personal risk themselves, suited up and took shifts spending time with me, um, helping me eat, um, encouraging me um, around the clock while I was in the hospital. Although my wife couldn't come in, um, these guys all work for the hospital, so they, they were allowed to come in and just, you know, be there for me. Well, you've saved lives in your career, and obviously your coworkers and friends contributed to make sure that your life was saved, and I think that's totally fitting, and again, I'm so happy to be able to share this story. The reason I connected with you is I was watching NBC4 New York News, and they rolled the video and the footage of you leaving the hospital, Richmond University Medical Center, and there were dozens and dozens of people, your friends, your family, firefighters, there was bagpipes playing. As you are exiting that hospital, Tony, how much emotion is filling up in your body and your world when you see this display? Uh, I was overwhelmed, um, but the most overwhelming feeling was seeing my wife and kids for the first time in three weeks. You made it out, you give your wife a hug, and again, I can't even put myself in your world, but when you finally have that opportunity to embrace, how does that make you feel? It must be a feeling of safety and relief that you know you're on your way home. It, it was an overwhelming feeling. Uh, I broke down crying. Um, my kids were crying. I was just overwhelmed and happy to be able to, to hug them after so long. Tony, part of the reason I contacted you, and I, I would have told your story if you had a, uh, any kind of cap on, but as you exited the hospital, you were wearing a Yankee cap. And we've talked offline, and you've told me that you're a big Yankee fan. Where did your Yankee fandom begin? So, funny story. I actually grew up in Queens, and uh, my uncle was the biggest Met fan, and he tried and tried to make me a Met fan. But... Um, one of my father's friends, his name was Joe Lane. They would, you know, always come over, barbecues and everything. And he was a Yankee fan. And I would always watch the games with him. And then I just started listening on the radio when I was a kid. I would fall asleep with like a little transistor radio in my ear, listening to Phil Rizzuto and Frank White and Bill Messer call the games when I was a kid. And I've just been a fan ever since. Do you have a greatest Yankee moment or a greatest Yankee memory from your fandom? Um, the, the 1996 World Series was very special because um, I had seen 77 and 78, but there was a long gap 
Yeah. From that time, I was, uh, you know, 10 and 11 years old when those went down. And then it was a long gap in 96 was very special to me. Tony, you also had experience at working at Yankee Stadium. Can you fill us in on what you have done at Yankee Stadium in the past? So for three years, um, 2016, 17, and 18, um, the hospital I worked for in Brooklyn was subcontracted to provide the paramedics for Yankee Stadium. So we took care of the people in the stadium and also the players if they, they needed. And I had the opportunity to take care of some players, but I can't you know, say who um, because of privacy. I, I know you were doing your job in those instances, but, at, but as such a big fan and, and you're getting to work at sta the stadium, have a peek at the field, interact with some of the players, again, in a professional manner, what did that mean for a Yankee fan? Oh, I was so, when I was taking care of plays, even doing this 31 years, I'm cool as a cucumber. I was like nervous that I was gonna, you know, uh, you know, taking care of a Yankee player. You're wearing your pinstripes today. So what, what pinstripe jersey, Yankee jersey, are, are you donning today? Uh, Aaron Judge. I, I just like the way he, uh, he goes about his business, um, how he's a five-tool player. I actually follow him since he was in the minors. And it's uh, crazy. Some of the scouts didn't think he was a very good fielder when he was coming up. And, uh, and you see how great a fielder this guy is. And you wonder what they were watching. Um, so I, I kind of have a preference for homegrown guys. I like to see them succeed and, uh, you know, stay Yankees for life. Tony, I know that this has been a trying and a frightening ordeal for you. But your success story, there are thousands of people, thousands of families who are dealing with this right now. And everyone's case is different. But if you had a message to pass on to those folks, a message of encouragement, a message about not giving up, what would you say to some of those folks who are struggling with the coronavirus? There's, there's hope. Don't give up. Um, uh, this is for real. Um, I, I never expected to get as sick as I did. A lot of us that do this job figured that we would probably get sick, um, but we still kept going to work every day. Um, but I didn't expect to get as sick as I am. And I fought with, with the support of my family and, and my friends and coworkers. And I'm here. I'm here now. Thank God. Tony, I've watched a lot of news coverage of the coronavirus, as we all have. And I do have to tell you, honestly, the, the footage of you leaving the hospital and that reception is going to stay with me for a long time because we all want bright spots. We all want success stories during this dark time. And, and what people did for you just lets me know how much you had done for so many people throughout your career. Yeah, it, it, it was overwhelming. Um, you said that you noticed my Yankee cap before. Uh, one of the paramedics who was taking me home is my full-time partner, and he's a Red Sox fan. He, I don't know if you noticed, he was wearing a Red Sox cap behind. But we have pretty good battles about the Yankees and Red Sox, all in good, good fun. Well, I'm glad that those battles will be able to continue. And I'm so happy that you and I connected and we've had the chance to talk. And thank you for all that you have done for other folks. And please rest, stay home, get yourself back to 100%. And it was really a pleasure to interview you, Tony. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much.